Stop giving. Giving. And sowing. Because you want God to bless you. Stop it. I've been preaching this for years. True of us. For many years I've been teaching you. I say stop giving because you want God. I've taught you that over time. No. That is business. And God is too big to be your business partner. Stop it. Christian responsibility. You give because you are responsible. A person comes to this church and looks around and says, wow, this place is beautiful. Is it not beautiful? If you say this place is not beautiful, you have a problem. If you say this place is not fine, you have problems. This is a beautiful place. And somebody says, and for you to understand that sometimes to maintain is more expensive than to build. To maintain this place, maintain the lights, maintain all the POP, maintain everything. Somebody looks and says, they must be spending a lot maintaining this place. Wow. I want to give an offering. And he gives an offering. As is Christian, in doing that, God now goes into his life, look for where he needs help. His mindset is because it is his responsibility. But when you give because there's one contract you are expecting, God is angry because that thing you are giving cannot produce that contract. You are not following what I'm talking about. Giving as Christian. That is why tight, eh? tight is the lowest form of giving. Tight is actually an insult to God. Tight. It's not wrong. No. If anybody tells you tight is wrong, the person is wrong. That is not wrong. But that is not, that is not even a subject that should be preached. It's a shame. So that's why you don't hear me talk about tithing. I don't preach about it. I don't emphasize about it. I leave those who are confused to be confused and make noise about it. In Matthew 23, 23. In Matthew 23, 23. Let me show you something. Matthew 23. Whoever is on the console, you will answer to me after the service. Matthew 23, 23. Read it loud and clear. Bring other translations up. Bring other translations. I will tell you why I said you should read several translations. You have read that message? Bring other translation. Bring TPT. What are you self righteous? Scribes, Pharisees, brokers. For you give a ten. That's tight of your. Main deal coming focusing on minor matters minor matters and have neglected the weightier matters more important moral and spiritual provisions justice mercy faithfulness but these are primary things he ought to have done not neglecting the others bring as much translations that you can bring up You are obsessed with peripheral issues, insisting on paying meticulous diet or the smallest herbs. These matters are fine. These matters are what? These matters are what? Talk to me. These matters are what? Your tithes and all that you are doing, it is fine. But it's minor. Is what? The weightier matters is love, care. Because in those days, what they were doing is that. A man can defraud his brother. So long he paid tight, if he is okay. I'm telling you where the abuse came. A man would do anything. He has not spoken to his wife for a year. And they are under the same roof. He wouldn't talk to her. But once he holds his tight, he believed that he has paid God for that sin. Jesus said no. So what is the real kingdom giving? Acts chapter 2 verse 42. Acts chapter 2 verse 44. We see real kingdom.
kingdom giving. Kingdom giving is extravagant giving. The believers were in fellowship and they shared as one body and they shared what with and they shared with one another whatever whatever and all those who believe in Jesus as savior we are together and add all things considering their possession belong to the group as all things all things in common that's what the church is that if you have a car you have a house as a pastor you listen to what i'm saying the bible this everything in the church belongs to the pastor those of you who are ministers of god god didn't say the word of god didn't say everything in the, in the house of god belongs to the evangelist if that's the reason you want to answer the call of god go and walk the bible didn't say that everything belongs to the pastor Young men start ministry offering tight in their pocket. How do you grow an organization like that? It come on. It was the duty of the pew to take care of the pulpit and the pulpit to take care of the pew. In common. There are churches where they don't help any member. It's a taboo. They can't help a member. One night, one couple does not come from church to help member. Member wants money from God. Pastor say pray. Pastor wants money. He tell member so. Why can't you pray, Pastor? Those of you answering call of God because you think it's flashy. See, eh? If you want to be really rich, kingdom way, don't be a pastor. Because you see the word of God is not a material for, for wealth. It's a material that makes people poor. Oh, you know what I'm saying? He said, sell all you have. And that's the Bible you're holding. Somebody mentioned, Jesus. How do I inherit eternal life? He said, go and give all. If you want to do business, the word of God is a good tool. But if you want to do ministry, he said, when I send you, carry no pulse with you god will supply your needs but he will not supply your extravagance he will supply your need will not empower your waste you want to answer the call of god because it's flashy because pastors are driving cars and looking good ask them their story it's not that an offering We saw someone a video of a popular secular artist who went to a church recently i give them over 100 million we have seen the video and they began to narrate what they did for his mother how the mother died and they got the mother a shop and he has given back that's how ministers get blessed people they invested in, in fact you can have about a hundred people not all will remember you that some investing is pg ho it's a waste. But there are some that will remember you. There are some that will. There are some that will forget you. There are some that will turn against you. There are some that will remember you. Giving is Christian responsibility. One time Moses in Exodus 33 verse 5 Exodus 33 and verse 5 Exodus 33 Exodus 35 sorry Exodus 35 verse 5. Sorry about that. Exodus 35 and verse 5. Look at what Moses said. Take you from among you an offering to the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it. An offering of the Lord, gold, silver, and brass. Go to verse 29. Verse 29. Then the children of Israel brought a willing. So your Christian responsibility to give has to be willing. Offering unto the Lord every man and woman whose heart 
made them willing to bring all manner. Moses was building a temple, so he told them, See, we are building. Go, bring all that we need to build. Bring all. And they were excited. It's my responsibility to see that the work of God is done. Bring up verse 29 again. They had made them willing all manner of work which the Lord commanded, had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. Okay, go to chapter 36, verse 3 and verse 6. The next chapter, 3 and 6. Exodus 36, verse 3 and verse 6. Let's read it loud and clear. And they received of Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it wither, and they brought it yet unto him free offerings every morning. Verse 6. And Moses gave commandment and caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained. Bring out the message or the translation. They stopped them, saying, It's okay. So Moses sent out others throughout the camp. Men, women, no more offering. For the building of the sanctuary, the people were ordered to stop bringing offerings. Moses issued a command and it was proclaimed throughout the camp. Let neither men nor women do any more work for the sanctuary offering. Hold on, leave that on. Many people were going to work, do labor do manual job whatever they pay them they take that money those who did not have we are going to work so they pay for the work in the in the temple moses now says stop working we have enough i believe god omega farm ministries will get to that level when god will so bless you that i'll be shouting is enough is enough is enough when God will so bless you that when it's a project in God's house, you will bring a gift. When God will so bless you to take care of the poor, when God will so bless you to take care of the orphans, God will bless you to take care of the widow and will be shouting in the church, is enough, is enough, is enough. God is going to bless you beyond your dreams, bless you beyond your expectation, bless you beyond your expectation. Take your seat, I want to round up. Is enough. Tell somebody it's your Christian responsibility. It is your Christian responsibility. Say that one more time. So stop. When God sees that you are giving genuinely because you are concerned, but what do we see today? Is there anybody who has money in an envelope? Anybody with money in an envelope? Come on. Just give me that, give me that brown pack. Admin. Admin. That brown envelope there, just give me. What do we see today? Somebody comes, a man of God. I've suffered. I've suffered. So I'm bringing this money. So this money you are bringing now, can you cure your suffering? I'm bringing this money as a seed so that my suffering. Am I correcting something here? What he's doing is right. But the understanding is wrong. Watch somebody say, Man of God, I saw that this place needs to be maintained. So I sold my car. Or I took everything I have. And I'm putting it for the maintenance of God's house. As it turns and heaven sees that. I'm doing this. I see crusades are going on around the world. And this crusade... Not because there's something I'm looking for. God is too big to be your business partner. This is not business. I'm doing it for the Lord. And when God sees that, because your heart is correct. Are you following? Are you seeing the difference? As it turns, God says, wow. He knows the need in my house. And he's doing it unconditionally. So let me give him a blessing that money cannot buy. And that is where help and favor begins to come your way. Come your, your, your family. Come into your life. And people are asking what is going on. I don't, I don't, 
I don't pay for people to be fed because I want one miracle. No. It's an instruction from God. People must eat, so I'm doing it. Let God see my heart. It's not good way. I'm not a philanthropist. Begin to understand that the reason you have not been seeing returns or seeing blessings as it were, or your giving has appeared uh, 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 it's, it's, it's at par with your receiving is because your mentality, your understanding of giving is corrupted. It's your responsibility. I see taking care of members as my responsibility. Members, you see taking care of their pastor as responsibility. There's a young lady who's married now with children. She's a millionaire now. Her duty for six years was to be sending me airtime. She never asked for prayer. End of the week, he said, my airtime, my airtime. Things were bad with her, she still maintained it. Today, she's married to a multi-millionaire. Who knows? But your own is tied to something. That's why, after you give once or twice, nothing happens, you are discouraged. But your mentality is corrupted. You have a wrong mindset. Am I teaching you something here? Number four, and then I'll pray. 